Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pomacher. Thank you so much for logging on and tuning in. If you haven't done it yet, go down and hit subscribe so you can come back over and over again and see some fantastic authors, filmmakers, artists, comic creators, creators of all kinds. Uh, don't forget to check out the descriptions down below for more information about our guests and our partners and all the great places that you can find out more about these fantastic artists. Um, we are here online hanging with award-winning sci-fi actress Tracy Birdsall once again and with director and writer Neil Johnson. And we're going to talk a little bit today about The Time War coming in 2018. Hey, guys, thanks for hanging with us. Hi. Thanks for having us. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. Um, it seems like, we, it was like, like, like yesterday we were just talking about uh, Rogue Warrior. And now here we are. You guys have been filming feverishly. Um, so tell us a little bit. Give us the, the, give us the, the kind of the the movie poster blurb on the Time War, so we can remind everybody. We talked a little bit about it last time, but let's remind everybody what it's about. Is that me? Go for it. Okay, go, so, Neil. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a film actually I wrote back in 1995, and basically runs along the lines of, it's Adolf Hitler traveling through time, rewriting history, and the problems it causes, you know, so it's, it's not really a, uh, a normal film under any circumstances. And I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's going to be pretty controversial. It's not, it's not pro-Nazi or anything like that. But it deals with the relationships of Adolf Hitler with the rest of his family, including his daughter, who's his arch nemesis, played by Tracy Burton. <laughs> and you know, Adolf Hitler is, is genetically rewriting himself as well to make himself a better man. Um, in his vision. Yeah, in his vision. So it, it's, it's, it's a very big, complex, epic movie. And, and I, I mean, it's, it's, it's got these giant submarines flying and doing battle and um, tanks and stuff. And, and, and stuff. And, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love, so you got, we, got, we, got, we, have, we have Hitler, Nazis, flying submarines, tanks, time travel. What didn't go in this film, Neil? What? <laughs> I mean, you threw it all in, didn't you? I was just going to say, I was, I was just talking to somebody else, and, I, and they asked me to, to pinpoint the genre besides sci-fi. And I'm like, it's sci-fi, it's action, it's drama, it's horror. I mean, there's everything in it. But the, I think one of the key things, and then I can pass it back to him, is that there are a lot of things on this that are based on fact. Neil actually went back and did a lot of research. And like Adolf Hitler really was do, you know, researching time travel technology and he really was into the idea of bettering himself genetically. And, and even the relationships within the film are based upon his real relationships. And then of course it gets written and it's not a true story, but it's, it's kind of, it makes you curious. And the other thing is, is that Adolf Hitler doesn't think he's a bad man in this film and Adolf Hitler didn't think he was a bad man. These were things that he was really doing. But you do get wow. to ultimately see his downfall, I will tell you that. Well, that's right. Anybody that wants to know about uh, Hitler and time travel, check out the multitude of, of uh, great interviews and, and articles online about the Nazi bell and the experiments that went on there. Um, you'll find a lot of material on that. Neil, what drew you to writing this story? Other than, man, you dream weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I dream. This, this is the sort of stuff I think about my whole life. So... As I said, I wrote it in '95. I, I don't. I obviously was a different person then, and I, I, I don't. You know, that, that's a question I don't know if I can answer. But well, it wasn't Adolf Hitler when you first wrote it. No, but it was. It was. Oh, it was. I yeah. thought that was a new development. No, the the original pitch was, and I've got the video one day. It'll all get released. Uh, imagine Adolf Hitler travels back in time and starts rewriting history. Imagine you're pregnant with uh, with his son, or you know. Oh, sorry, no, imagine you're pregnant with Adolf Hitler and, you know, you have to abort the child, but you don't believe in abortion and all that That's sort of stuff. That's the sequel. Yeah, but that was kind of where it was, <laughs> it was the ge genesis of the idea. And it kind of grew from there. So it always was meant to be that sort of character. Then what happened was, and I, I sort of steered away from that because, 
you know, you start writing characters and they come to life and you start falling in love with your, your the bad guy in the film and he's, he's, he's a wonderful character and you, you don't want him to be Adolf, to be Adolf Hitler. But it, it sort of started building itself. Then I wrote this, this thing, it ended up, we shot it three years ago called At the Edge of Time. And, you know, Rogue Warrior came out and it's done really well. And I mean, it's, you know, it's obviously available on iTunes and Amazon mm-hmm. and everything right now, plug. But <laughs> it's such a big film that it's, I, I, I just couldn't go backwards with, you know, At the Edge of Time. Not that it was a bad film, it just it wasn't as big an epic. So I, I started, you know, talking Trace into shooting some extra scenes and they sort of took a life of their own on, and it kind of went back to that original idea anyway. So it, it just became this whole machine of this big movie. And then I just, one day, about a few months back, I was looking at it and I thought, you know what, I, this isn't a movie, it's two movies. What am I doing? You know. <laughs> so I, I end up splitting at the end of time and the time war into two films. The time war is the big one. Uh, and it'll be out first, and the other one's the prequel. Yeah, or it'll be another film in the same universe. And, you know, I can't wow. be sure. Wow. So there's actually two movies. Wow, that's fantastic! And and uh, what it, you've got, like you said, there's a lot of controversy. There's gonna be a lot of really deep subjects in here, um, including uh, I, I think Tracy hit it right in the head, which is bad guys don't know they're bad guys. They're they really <laughs> believe in what they're doing. No, and, that, and that's the thing. You know, we we always demonize people. You know, I mean. You look at anyone who's who's evil, you know, in, in the real world today. I mean, look at, um, uh, it, you know, Bin Laden, for example. Now, in his own head, he was doing 100% the right thing. He did some pretty bad stuff. But in his own mind, he was doing that. He wasn't evil. I'm not saying I'm evil or anything. Yeah. He, he was with God in his own head, and he was righteous. And there's many people who thought he was righteous. Of course, the reality is he wasn't. But that's, you know. We and, get to and, decide that after the fact, though. During, you know, right when, the, when you're in the middle of it all, and particularly now you're dealing with Hitler and World War II and, and now time jumping all around. So in the middle of it all, nobody gets to decide that until it's all over with, that this is really the bad guy. Which is really how it works in the real world when you look at it. Well, just imagine meeting Hitler as a boy, you know, and, and he's a sweet little boy. He's a little bit weird. And yet he was in love with this Jewish girl in his early teenage years and all this stuff, believe it or not. Um but you know, I mean, he was this guy growing up in this in this strange reality, this strange world, not like ours. And he was probably very sweet. He was very fond of his mother. He loved dogs. Uh, he was a vegetarian. You know, he abhorred, he hated cigarettes, um, and all this sort of stuff. And he's, you know, he had all these good good sides to him. But somewhere along the way, he got corrupted, and it just went terribly, terribly wrong. To the point where, it, you know, they nearly wiped out, well, they wiped out the gypsies in, in, in Germany were completely gone. Um, the Jews were heavily decimated by, you know, his actions. But in what, I'm sure he didn't set out saying, I'm going to eradicate these people and be the most evil man. He never thought that for one second. So, And he was highly medicated by that point. He was on drugs. Yeah. And we didn't know. I mean, you know, it's become. There's been a few books written about his drug use, mm-hmm. but but mm-hmm. we didn't know that the, the the downsides of taking, you know, the drugs he was on. Nobody knew because it had we hadn't gone down that path. Wow. So he got a little bit messed up by his actions, by the doctors around him, by the people around. I'm not saying he was ever a good person or a righteous person, but you certainly, know, he went path. certainly in his own mind he was. And uh, if nothing else, it speaks to the human ability to, we can justify the most horrible acts if we think we're righteous. And yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, it's a great message to have. Tracy, you had to play Hitler's daughter and his nemesis, but moreover than that, as I understand it, there are multiple versions of you in this film. So you had to play a lot of characters, all one character. What, how big a challenge was that for you? It was huge. It was actually when he handed me the script with the rewrites, it completely boggled my mind. Because, <laughs> okay. yeah, it still does. Because I'm so into identifying my character and all the things about them that are different. And there's literally 25 or 30 versions of her. So, what I had to do was, I had to, since they're being snatched through time in order to put an army together, I had to, um, we had to, I had Neil help me nickname them all. So I actually play them as completely different characters 
in order that I could get my mind around it because I was so complete. Like the, the concept makes sense, but how to do it as an actress is very confusing. You know, you have to put on all that person's tics and their attitude and their positioning and, and it's like, how are we going to do this? So they actually have all of these different nicknames. We have like Francie and Eye Patch and Subcommand. <laughs> well, it's, what's amazing is it sounds like you've been able to do with that character, the, the exactly what Neil was just talking about, which is show multiple facets of a personality and which ones come forward and which ones don't, which ones get remembered and which ones don't. And, and some, some of them have been through worse things in their life experiences, which you'll see, and so they're kind of damaged, too. Mm -hmm. And so being able to identify them by having a code name when we're filming made it a lot easier. Wow. So, Neil, and all of the research that you did and all of the different eras and, and, uh, in, in time that you got to look at while you were putting this film together, uh, what was your favorite? Where would you like to visit in time? If I could put you in the TARDIS and send you there, where would you go? Can I go with a camera? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Well, I can't send a filmmaker back in time without his camera. That's just unfair. But what if there's no film? <laughs> <laughs> what if there's no outlets, right? <laughs> well, it's not going to last long, but you'll have it for a little while. <laughs> computer to transfer the red card. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's funny. I... I, I I'm always a believer in this, some sort of technology, wormhole technology. One day we might be able to use wormhole technology to punch holes in the universe and actually go back in time and see things really the way they were. Um, you know, I, I would like to go back and see how Jesus was, for example, and if he existed and under what conditions he really existed. And, you know, you still can't know the mind of a person, but it'd be interesting to see people and then see how that little germ of an idea exploded throughout history into something else and followed that. Well, I'm, and that's I'm, such a completely different time era, too. I think it's hard for almost any modern-day person to imagine that era in time. Life yeah. was so incredibly different than, exactly. than anything that we know or even can fathom at this point. So that's, yeah. um, and, I, and I can hear you in just a moment when I finish doing this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, that's, fan that's fantastic. Now, Tracy, we know that if you could travel back in time, you'd visit old Hollywood. Now, yes. what would be the dream role when you got there? What role would you like to try out for when you get to old Hollywood? You there know, are so a, many fantastic roles. There's so many. All I can think about is in old Hollywood, I could have worked so often because there was no internet. There was no any of the stuff where it's like open to anybody, whether they're really an actor or not. There's so much, so many people out there that I think I just could have like just done really, really well. I think I would have really enjoyed that. But there is not a particular role I hate. I always give you a negative answer. With that. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, look, if, if, if we go back in time and Tracy's at those big meetings with the LB mayors out there, she'll take any job. She wants the job. That's it. She's going to work in <laughs> old Hollywood. Like, I just like living the lives of others. So for me, the more often that I get to be on camera, I mean, Neil will attest to this. He'll go... Can you do this tomorrow? I'll say yes. I mean, because I absolutely love creating characters and living the lives of other people. So I, I was talking to somebody earlier, and they're like, well, what's something that you'd want to do? And I go, I think the only thing I haven't done is be like an evil serial killer or something. I mean, I've just, <laughs> I, I haven't been stuck in a genre, so I've, had the, I've been fortunate enough to kind of be everything. And now, that's my favorite part. Now, uh, Neil, we know that on, uh, on, on the last film we talked about, on Rogue Warrior, uh, Tracy did a lot of her own stunts. Are you still having her out there doing her stunts? How, how, how's that working? I think, I believe you are, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, no, no major injuries yet. Um, <laughs> a little bit of heat exhaustion the yeah. other day. Yeah, it's yeah. been a lot of heat oh, wow. Well, Climbing now, out tomorrow. Now, tomorrow. you guys filmed in a lot of locations uh, for this project. A lot. Um, what kind of challenges did that present for you? Both Look, of you, really. Neil, go ahead. It's still, it's still a challenge right now because the problem is, uh, yeah, because I said that we made the choice to split the movies up so you have to shoot more footage. So I've actually got to go back to the UK and, and shoot some, uh, some more stuff with Tracy and uh, we're figuring out how we do that probably in the next couple of weeks. Um, what else? But I mean, a lot of the time it, it's, we don't want to go to the same places we shot Rogue Warrior at. So we're going, 
we're doing things like climbing mountains. We've climbed a lot of mountains. Um, I mean, a, a lot. lot of mountains. And there's like bear poop everywhere and stuff. I mean, <laughs> I'm looking for Bigfoot. It's in the places where Bigfoot exists, but I don't see it. But I have a really good answer for that, and that is costuming. Because when we first started shooting, we were shooting in California. Then we go to the UK for three weeks, and we're shooting in zero degrees in the same costuming. Then we come back here, and it's in the 80s and 90s in summer, and we're shooting in the same costume. So there's just it's been a real challenge because there's leather coats and there's all these things, and it's like, and we have to tie it in with the footage in the UK, so you still have to wear the coat even though it's hot. Yeah, and the, wow. And the guns are huge. I go to bed and I put arnica on my wrist because they're real World War II guns, and they're really heavy, and you have to act like you carry it around all day, and it's no big deal. Wow. You know? now now, shooting a period piece, a World War II piece, are there location challenges in finding locations where you're not uh, inundated with modern technology? You know, yes. th you wouldn't find a TV antenna, for example. Uh, that kind of, I remember seeing way years ago behind the scenes on an Indiana Jones film where they had to take out all the TV antennas in Cairo. Um, so did you, you, you obviously faced those kind of challenges. How did you overcome those, uh, you know, right on set? Well, you see, a lot of it, we, we are assuming that the technology has gone in a different direction. Okay. So we do allow some, obviously we don't have computers, but we do allow certain things, which, you know, and, and, and just different forms of things. So, you know, a communicator you might have, for example, which could be like a cell phone, but it's just a long, thin tube. Uh, or, you know, there, there is there are tanks that fly with, with jet thrusters and stuff. So it's, I you think know. just cool. Just yeah. saying, that's just cool. And it's fun. We push in weird directions. And I mean, because I do sci-fi, we're used to that stuff. But that's why we have to use a lot of England. Because uh, they do have castles that are preserved. And and they had the submarine we used. They had, yeah, there's a submarine. So which, which film was that used on the other There was one? a submarine that was used in Transformers. Yeah, we used that the we shot submarine. on submarine. We've got to find another submarine. So what we do is, is find those places where uh, there are either abandoned locations from the 40s or 50s. Or we um, we kind of go to those preserved places like like old submarines, like tanks, like uh, old castles or uh, churches where they where they don't want those TV antennas and technology. So it, it's actually not that hard to do, and it, it looks good too. Yeah, so it, absolutely. It's, yeah, you know, so yeah, we we shot in uh, we've shot in USA a lot. We shot in. England a lot, you know, and all over England too, north, south, just all over. Everywhere. Wow, yeah. Well, we're going to throw links down below to all the work that you guys are doing out there online and all the different articles that we can find. They're talking all about this coming up in 2018, the time war. Um, we, we have the portion of our show, Tracy knows about this, we call this clickbait. I need a headline, guys. So let's get a headline here and we're going to ask you some really silly questions that the girls went out to the internet to find. Okay. And yep. then they then they morphed them and warped them and made them appropriate for this uh, this audience and, and this project. So, okay, th this one's for Neil because he just said it on camera a little while ago. So you're out there on location. You've got to run in with Bigfoot. What do you do, Neil? Grab your camera. <laughs> grab, grab the iPhone. Start rolling. Talk to him. Talk to him. And All right. Well, we checked down Bigfoot's family, and now. Um, okay, Tracy, this one's for you uh, because Sage is grinning and giggling. So I'm, I'm scared I'm, of that. <laughs> I, me too. Uh, if you had a pet rhinoceros, what would you name it and where would it sleep? Where did you find that? Is there like a rhinoceros club on the internet? <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Uh, any, well, I can tell you what, let's just let's switch that up. What would be your choice of an exotic pet? What would your exotic pet be, Tracy? I kind of like the rhinoceros. You like the rhinoceros? Okay, well, name the I, rhinoceros. I'm going with it. You're I going with it. She, she's I'm, a... I'm on board. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, name the I rhinoceros. Think, I think I'd call him Baby, and I think I'd have him sleep in my giant bathtub. Because you can't put him in a corner? Nobody puts Baby in a corner. Nobody puts Baby in the corner. <laughs> That's the weirdest question I've ever read. So we're on the same page there. Okay. So um, we love to, to, to get into your personalities a little bit. And uh, we know, you know, we're, we have the best soundtracks of a generation ever. So both of you, favorite 80s or 90s jam? Me? 
go first. I don't oh, know she's going first. Ah, I, I, I mean, I, 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 let's see. Um, anything by Duran Duran would make me happy at the moment. <laughs> awesome. Um, God. I was into Pretenders, Hotels. I grew up at the beach, you know, oh. so yeah. go goes, um, B 52s. Awesome. awesome. We got all kinds. Of, they're actually like, they're like dancing behind the camera, so they've got the songs going through their head now. So. They're so. <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. That's a, that's that's a hundred percent agreement right there. So, um, okay. So, oh, this is I like this. I don't know where this came from. Some personality quiz. I'm sure they they robbed for this one. Okay, guys. Favorite color, and what does that smell like? Yellow. It smells like vanilla, and yes. the reason why is it makes me happy, and vanilla is my favorite smell because yellow makes me happy. There's something about it. It's just so bright and cheery. Very and cool. Favorite Very song. cool. Now, this is this is a great one for Neil for the guy behind the camera. Favorite color? Yellow as well. As well, both yellow. Okay. I had a yellow sports car once, so the smell I'd associate with that would be the smell of black leather. Black leather. Oh yes, very yeah, sports car. Leather interior. You can actually feel. You can actually feel. There's uh, not that not that the internet knows anything about this, but there's a little gender bias here. She smells vanilla. He smells leather, and, and thinks of his car. <laughs> I had a yellow beanbag chair as a child. It's one of my favorite things. Awesome. See that? See that? Now, the, the internet's freaking out right now because they're like, they know from our last interview, Tracy, that you're not exactly the girly girl. We got vanilla and beanbag chairs while he's, you know, running around in his leather seats in his car. So, uh, all right, guys, where are you guys going to be up the road? Are you, you going to be uh, talking about Rogue Warrior somewhere? Are you going to be doing a con after you get off location and get about three months sleep? <laughs> where are you guys going to be presenting this stuff? We've got to go through post and marketing, and then we're going to get started on Rogue Warrior, the, the follow-up TV series. So I don't really think we've got a lot of time off here. Wow. wow. There's no time off allowed. That's the problem. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I've, probably got to, I've probably got to go see, see family for a bit because, you know, I've got family in Australia. Uh -huh. um, but, I mean, I, there's, there's very little thing. You know, there's we no time. We don't take time off. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 terrible out there. I'm in post production the moment we finish shooting for the next six to eight months. And I think cons are a great thing to go to, and I'm sure we'll probably go to the next one because we missed this one. But they're a great thing to go to when you're finished with the project. It's out there, and you're not working on another one. Yeah. What everybody would really rather is we just keep working. <laughs> 57 films coming next year because these guys are just monsters, man. They just keep going. Cause, yeah. Because otherwise when you don't have anything going on, then you go to a convention because that's where you, where you are around your fans because you don't have a project right now, which is great, but I'd rather be working. Rather yeah, be see, working. Yeah, the problem is, you know, like we, I've, I've been on probably 15 Comic-Con panels. Uh, and, I, I, you know, when, when you're doing all that, and I, you know, on other people's projects, my own, your work stops. And yeah. I, do, I don't get more fans from being at conventions. You know, yeah. I get more fans by putting out quality work. So for me, you know, the convention, I love them because I'm, I'm the biggest fan oh, on the planet. Them. Yeah. But, you know, I would rather go for fun. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't have to go anywhere for fun because if we go to a convention, for me, I'm in solid interviews. You know, I'm, I'm, I've seen a droid go by. I'm like, well, look at a picture of the droid. <laughs> Because you want to go be a kid, you know. Oh, that's why. I, we, you know, we were we, we just came back from MegaCon in uh, Tampa Bay this last weekend, and um, like for like four days, my entire social media feed dries up. Yeah. Because I'm doing interviews every 20 minutes for three days, and I so, and then mm -hmm. I walk outside, and, and my little guy is is uh, in cosplay, and I'm like, hey, well, who'd you see today? And he goes down this list, and I'm like, I hate you. You're six. Yeah, I hate you already. That's me. I'm sitting there watching people go by, wishing I could be out playing. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, guys, we got to wrap it up. We've been talking to director and writer Neil Johnson and sci-fi actress Tracy Birdsall talking about the Time War and everything else that these guys are doing. Time War is coming in 2018, uh, which it will be followed up by a, a prequel. And then following, uh, and then, which is, what's the prequel again? 
Guys, it's... We don't know yet what, the, what it's called. So. We only have a working title, so it'll change. Oh, okay. So, But look for the Time War for certain. And uh, also, guys, check out Rogue Warrior. You guys will find the links down below to all the stuff we've talked about with Tracy and Neil. Uh, as we wrap it up, we're going to thank our partners and our friends over at Something Unique Magazine, Space Coast Comics, Wordfire Press, Famous Faces and Funnies, Off the Chain Radio with author Yvonne Mason. And uh, we want to say a special welcome to Heather Reed and the folks at Asylum Convention and Entertainment Services uh, for joining the team just today, actually. So we're really excited about that. I'm Jimmy Pometcher. We've been hanging with, once again, award-winning sci-fi actress Tracy Birdsall. Thanks for coming back, Tracy. We really appreciate it. And director and writer Neil Johnson. Uh, and they were talking about the Time War. So check out the links down below for places, festivals, you name it. We're going to put everything down there. And then check out our social media because we're going to tell you when this thing is out somewhere where you can find it. But you can't find it right now because these guys are keeping it on track. They're going back. They're shooting more in England. Find their location. Cheat. Be like the watchers on the wall. Find Neil and, <laughs> and grab him. So, okay, guys, we're going to say goodbye. Thank you so much, Neil. Thank you so much, Tracy. Remember, folks, subscribe, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next. Thank <laughs> you.